Board for the Area Plan Commission. First thing I'd ask you to do is please join the pledge flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Psychiatric Center. Uh, roughly, there will be one patient discharged per day on average and one patient admitted on average, so the traffic shouldn't be that heavy. Um, the building will add 15 to 21 jobs uh, in the community, everywhere from housekeeping to nursing, uh, potentially a nurse practitioner. The, um, the traffic flow on those positions should be uh, 7 to 8 during the day and 7 to 8 at shift change during the evening. Uh, so we're talking maybe eight to nine cars uh, on the day and eight to nine cars during the night down that road. Um, our architect is here and uh, some of his other staff to answer any technical questions about the building. Uh, we certainly uh, want to get this done. We're under a timeline to get this completed by October and have a patient admitted because of the way the government uh, reimburses us. We have to have a patient at least admitted by the 1st of October. Um, and requesting approval for this project. Any technical questions? Anybody on the board have questions to ask me? Anybody? No? And is, okay, one thing is the, of course there's the additional uh, vehicles. Now, uh, one question is that uh, the additional amount of traffic that might be generated, say from visitors, to those in the, in the geriatric, and there's also uh, uh, clinic, uh, clinic visits also, it's just strictly the, uh, the psychiatrist. Just strictly the residents. If, this is a, if they have a medical issue, mm -hmm. the medical issue would override the psychiatric issue, they would get sent back to their nursing home or to the hospital mm -hmm. or the facility of their choice. Uh, it's strictly psych, so it's not a, a medical clinic, it's strictly uh, psych for dementia, um, polypharmaceuticals, uh, depression, and patients 65 and older. So that uh, that heavy traffic like the clinic will not be going on at, at there. So it's 12 beds of slow turning, roughly uh, 10 to 14 day stay. So my math says 12 beds, 10 to 14 minutes of stay, average one discharge and one emission day. Okay. 
And so then the only additional traffic other than employees is liable to be the uh, uh, visitors. Very limited visitor because the, uh, the bulk of these, some of these patients haven't worked on the Jerry site <coughs> unit are not going to be able to converse. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be mentally confused or in a high state of confusion. Some will, uh, but with all the programs and everything going on, that, that traffic will happen later in the evening when there will be visitation mm -hmm. hours. So this is going to be pretty intensive counseling and, and uh, psychiatric support. Thank you. Any questions about board members? Anybody in the audience have a question? Yes. Yes. Yes, sign in. You don't get paid if you don't sign in. My name is Claire Johnson, and my wife with me, Faye. Um, we live at 505 Erie Avenue. We've uh, occupied that home for many years. We was there when the uh, first facility was built, and at that time, uh, we was given the impression of the amount of traffic, and they underestimated that by 200%. There's a lot more traffic than they told us there would be. But my concern is, during construction, when the heavy equipment comes in and out of there, uh, they come out of there and turn east on Erie Avenue and go down to Waterloo Road. Uh, during the construction of the first phase, there was considerable damage to my yard because the trucks couldn't make that turn. And I couldn't find anybody that would accept responsibility for that. And so I'm here tonight. Here you are, did you say? Oh, yes. So you're right there on the corner? I'm right on the corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm here tonight to have it on the record that if there's damage this time to my yard, that I hope somebody will be responsible for it. I'd say that's reasonable. And, uh, and directly across the street from my house, there's a tree that's about eight inches off the road. And so passing somebody is very limited. And if there's any passing at all, it's my yard that suffered because nobody has been hit that tree. And so uh, who would be responsible for uh, if there is damage to my yard? Would it be the hospital? Would it be the construction crews? Would it be? <coughs> Typically, that would be the construction company. Whoever's doing the construction would be responsible. Okay. And, and how do I go about contacting them <coughs> as to who they are? And That's something you'd have to ask the hospital for. Okay. Can I ask them that at this point? Well, I don't know, yeah, I know who it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can kind of answer that question. I'm Adam Palmer. I'm the architect for the project from Schmidt Associates. Um, we are also handling the construction services. Okay. So we will be uh, responsible for managing the, all of the contractors. Mm -hmm. We'll be sure to document um, everything of how your yard looks at this point. We'll take some photographs and, and document what everything looks like now so that if any damage is done, we're able to um, push that back onto one of the contractors that's responsible for truck driving and whatever. So, Will help document and make sure that's the okay. case. During, Thank you. During the first construction, I couldn't keep them from coming into my yard, so I uh, spent quite a bit of money and effort putting up a, a uh, barrier so that they couldn't get on my yard. But it wouldn't take much for a big truck to run over that. That shouldn't have to happen. Here's well, also my contact information and home phone number. Okay. And at any time I can drive over, I'm glad to uh, work with you on any issues you have. All right. right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Does that answer everything for you? I think so. Okay. <coughs> any other questions related to this request for spatial exception? What's, oh, right. What's the time frame of you? Data construction to the data finish. I mean, you're you get this. We we'll start construction tomorrow if you approve it tonight. Okay. <laughs> we'll be done. We'll be done um, probably sometime in the middle of October. Patients will be in by the first of October. Middle of October. But there may be a little bit of 
wrapping up with some things by the middle of October. All right. Just concerning for the neighbors and the neighborhood and people, noise and so on and so forth. We anticipate, uh, you know, the trucks and the, and the dust, particularly in the summertime and such, but the, the damage uh, we can't accept. Right. I want to thank the CEOs explain their position. We'll see to it that you don't have any suffering from it. I would appreciate that. Thank you. It's about all you'd ask for. Anybody else have any questions or comments on that? Board members, Eddie? Uh, Mr. Johnson, yes. your initial statement was that the traffic flow was underestimated by 200 percent on the, on, on the first construction. I just wonder if anybody wanted to. They told us, and I don't remember the exact amount, that there would be 10 or 12 cars, that's an estimate, going in and out of there a day. But there's, there's five times that going in the, the facility there is now. I can't speak to that particular point of time because I was not here. I understand. If you were misinformed, uh, my apologies. Uh, I will confess to us trying to be uh, very capitalistic and do the best that we can in trying to get the most patients and create the most jobs. So we have increased the uh, outpatient numbers of patients who come over there, uh, not only uh, kids but young adults. Mm -hmm. So that, that is something that we have increased. Um, as for 10 or 12, I, I've got that many staff in there. With, with the 30 beds, there's yeah. one or two kids coming and going per day. Yeah. So I will ask that, but I, I, I will take full responsibility for his yard. Between Adam and I, we will deal with it uh, and, and make you whole in this situation. So I expect. So uh, you got my word on that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions or comments or on this request for special exception? Anybody else in the audience care to comment? No members. Okay on what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, if that be the case, I think we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion and we'll send a favorable recommend recommendation for the special exception. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion on that? If not, we'll proceed to vote. Can we call the vote, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, Restate what we're voting on. Okay. okay. Is it special exception to. Okay, we're going to approve the special exception. Um, Jerry Govan. Voting, voting to approve the special exception. All right. Uh, Jerry Govan? Yes. Zane Bedore? Yes. Mark Flum? Yes, sir. Yes. Sorry, Ed Harrell? Yes. Carl Hilton? Yes. Jason Waterman? Yes. Dave Nobby? Yes. Brian James? Yes. And James Barrett? Yes. All that's here? Yes. That's approved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of nine. Okay, motion passes. Eight out of nine. Thank you. And following this meeting is for uh, not everybody in the audience needs to stay. But uh, there is the hearing from the Board on Appeals immediately following this meeting for the, uh, for the final approval. Because this is just a recommendation. Okay, on the, on the agenda, we'll go to item three. Sorting code amendments, plan business, and a special exception. Now, we'll help Wayne go so everybody understands what we're going to do. Okay, this, uh, this public hearing is for the, uh, the zoning code amendment that was forwarded by the county commissioners. And we've had a, uh, some discussions as far as with some changes with the uh, hospitals where representatives would help prepare the uh, language. And what you'll see is uh, uh, what I got to everybody was a second version and then there's now been a third version. And that's what uh, everybody 
should have in your package. And we see that today. Now, the difference with that is, okay, version 2, what this does is it removes all the uh, discretion on the part of the executive director, whether it's me or any executive director in the future, from waiving the special exception for any, any project in the planned business district. So anything that actually requires a special exception has to go before the Area Plan Commission and the Zoning Board of Zone Appeals. So that discretion is gone entirely, and quite honestly... Example what? Okay, well, <clears throat> for example is the way the language was previously written. Okay, uh, there was the executive director had the authority to, if the project met certain conditions, they could waive the special exception requirement. You now, the director could. Uh, the director could, yes. Now, uh, there's potentially a lot of problems right there because someone could have waived the special exception requirement for the public hearings for a project could be a fairly significant, uh, a fairly significant impact on neighboring properties. And my personal feeling is, as a planner is that uh, the director shouldn't have that level of discretion. It's it's open to abuse. You know, with that. Then who should have the discretion? Uh, no one should have that discretion to waive a to waive a special special exception requirement. They should all go through the public hearing process. So that is and that process is uh, exactly what we did with the previous uh, with the uh, hospital special exception. Okay. So potentially that could have been in a Plan business district, and the way it was written, the executive director could potentially have had the, uh, the leeway to waive the special exception. Now, at times it might sound nice, but like I said, there's a potential for abuse. And uh, so that is deleted. Now, the, the other uh, change is the, uh, the, uh, the section of the text and of the uh, special exception portion. Upon such hearings, if the, if the commission or board finds that all of the following apply, and this makes explicit what's implied, that uh, to approve a special exception, all criteria need to be met. So if none of the criteria are met, you have to reject. If all the cri criteria are met, you have to approve. That's basically what that comes down to. Now, what was previously a, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the new criteria was F, which was the establishment, maintenance, or operation of the special exception will not be detrimental to the use, operation, or employment levels of existing publicly operated uses which provide services to the residents of Fayette County or municipalities located <coughs> within Fayette County. Version 3 has eliminated that language. It's the uh, the, uh, and that the, the term public operated uses was problematic. Plus, those concerns are actually met in the first requirement of, uh, in the find criteria, which is an establishment maintenance or operation of a special exception will not be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, or general wel welfare. So how uh, public use might be affected, that's a general welfare issue mm -hmm. uh, under the uh, special exception. And the clause that the new criteria will be kept is the establishment, maintenance, or operation of the special exception will not contravene the principles of reinvestment, <coughs> revitalization, and the avoidance of unintended consequences as set forth in the Bay County Comprehensive Plan. But this text, what this piece of uh, this criteria requires is it makes explicit that the Area Plan Commission uh, consider the comprehensive plan and make the decision. Now, we all know it's implied that we need to follow the comprehensive plan, but this has specific findings that need to be met and entered by uh, the petitioner and then also the staff on the staff report as to uh, how it may affect the public. Okay. It wasn't set for what we really going. Okay. Version 3. Now, what I, now my, does anybody have any questions on that other than 
Mrs. Mr. Hilton's question from the side. Uh, the changes were in version three. Any questions or concerns about, uh, about that particular language or the amendment? Hey, Bill, have a Bill, make sure that I understand this right now. Yes. This new F paragraph yes. removes the phrase medical clinics, hospitals, emergency care facilities, and the like. That's gone. correct. That is that is eliminated. Okay. Because that's all taken care of by eliminating discretion. That language is no longer necessary. Okay. I just want to make sure mm -hmm. that that's. So that language is not necessary. Does that answer? Okay. Yes. Now I could read the whole thing if everybody wanted well, I to. Think we're ready to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the most uh, musical voice. Uh, I know that. Oh, I think I got the idea of all now. But okay. Anybody else with a question on the board? I'm not here. <laughs> Yeah, I think that one. This was uh, this was where we to know just to make sure I know we're right here. Give this a lot of paper. Yes, um, there is. Just to make sure we're looking at this from from uh, when Mr. White talked to us about. Correct. Uh, last month. Okay, last month. Mm -hmm. So does this would this fit your needs from what you have? Yes. What you're talking about? Like I said, it went through a series of uh, a review and then amendment. To where it's not applying to just one particular use, but is applying to everything across the board that requires a special exception in a plan business district. And other questions by board members? Now, anybody from the audience have a question? Lack of clarity or something? Now, okay. Okay, now, what I would recommend is the a conditional approval, a conditional favorable recommendation of the version three, the one that we received today, the most recent version. And that's the one that is uh, eliminating the, uh, both the discretion and then also the, uh, uh, the, one, the, the one criteria. So I recommend uh, those be conditional approval to go back to the, uh, to forward to the legislative bodies. Conditional, approval. conditional, favorable recommendation, and then that will go to uh, that is what will be included in the amendments and the, the ordinance that goes to the county commissioners and the city council. Upon our approval, yeah, upon a favorable rec upon a favorable recommendation, but it needs to be a it needs to be stated that's a conditional because uh, it's it's amended. We're not quite certain what, why you have to have conditional. Well, it's... Tell them what the conditions are. Okay, because the conditions are that the original amendment that was forwarded by the county commissioners, okay, the condition is that it be amended to the third version, and that's what the condition is, because the county commissioners forwarded us an, an ordinance, a, a zoning code amendment, as written one very specific way. Now what the Area Plan Commission <coughs> is doing is returning a revised version and because it's revised to put a conditional a favorable recommendation. Actually it's an amendment? Uh, yeah, it's a, basically it's a, uh, yeah, amending, it, amending the amendment is essentially what this is. We don't want to get into that. I think we've got some people lost. Oh, it loses me every time. I didn't say Okay. What's that? It's conditional for the uh, commissioners to vote on. Commissioners have to Correct. Right to the Correct. So the okay. commissioners and then the uh, city council are voting, voting on that third version, which I will then uh, present to the uh, commissioners and then the city council. Okay. So clarify for you. Any other questions by anybody? Anybody in the audience with a question? Okay, we're going to proceed to vote on one sentence. Okay, conditional approval of the third version of the uh, special. Okay, 
Okay, uh, the uh, zoning code amendment for the plan business and special exceptions. Mr. President, I move that we do what he said. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have all that down there, do we? I'll Our second. second. <laughs> <laughs> Our second. Or are we moving on? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We need to take a vote on that. Bill, state that again because I'm kind of lost on what you just said. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. The motion was okay. a conditional mm -hmm. favorable recommendation of the of the uh, zoning code amendment forwarded by the county commissioners with the condition that the changes made in the third version. That language be adopted. Okay. Get all that. Got all that. Okay. Jerry, go. Uh, yes. <laughs> Zane Bedor? Yes. Ed Harrell? Yes. Carl Hilton? Yes. Jason Waterman? Yes. Dave Nobby? Yes. Brian Jennings? Yes. And James Barrett? Yes. All in favor of that are here. That's eight out of nine. Okay. It's been approved. Eight out of nine. It's present. Next, we'll go to the here. We're going to get on the agenda. Okay. The next item is the, zoning code, amendment. This is the zoning code amendment for the changes to the administrative section of the uh, area zoning code. And that is what was for. Zoning code amendment or what? Yeah, it's the zoning code amendments. Okay. That is, uh, that's item number, that's the third item. Okay. And uh, that's what we will be uh, third here in this board. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll briefly say what this implies or contains that we will be acting on. Now, Discussed and tabled last month with the Area Plan Commission. Now, you know, you know, you know, everybody has a copy of that? Yes, everybody has a copy. Nothing has been changed since last month with the language. And because there's such a large amount of information, I asked the, uh, any, uh, the Plan Commission members any comments or questions or concerns or issues uh, that uh, might need to be amended. Uh, change from uh, what I presented to the plan commission to make those changes. Did you receive any? Uh, I have not, did not receive any prior to this. Now, what we did receive were two uh, two letters of support uh, for the uh, adopting site plan review and the technical advisory committee. And the first is from Bill Hammerman, the director of Connorsville Utilities. It's a uh, there's an absolute need for a formal procedure for plan review to help guide developers through this process. With the plan review requirement in place, developers considering projects within the city or county can be directed to the APC for the proper procedures. A formal plan review process involving the appropriate department heads and elected officials will ensure that developers have the information they need to plan a project that meets local requirements and infrastructure needs. We'll support this effort and continue to participate in any way needed. And that's by Bill Ammerman, uh, the uh, okay. director of Connors with Utilities. And then we have a second letter of support. It's from uh, Chief Troy Tipton of the Connorsville Fire Department. It's to whom it may concern. I feel that we need to have a formal plan review process. It would help eliminate cost mistakes to get overlooked. It would help eliminate mistakes that could affect public safety. It would help keep all parties on the same line of communication. 
and this is way less frustrating to the contractors, developers, and their clients. If you would like, I can have the State Fire Marshal's office come speak on the matter. Troy Tipton, Fire Chief. And uh, I've received those within the last week. Is that it? And that is actually it. And in the uh, staff report I included in the package had a little bit more explanation of the uh, of the uh, various uh, of, uh, explaining the re rationale behind some of these particular changes. And uh, so we're down the thought now. Okay, this is down to number one is if there's any questions or comments that any plan commissioning members have of those amendments at this point in time. Anybody? Uh, yeah, um, I'm looking at this technical advisory committee and still I am very concerned with the amount of power that it gives to, to well, non-elected members. Um, and uh, really looking at the members of the technical advisory board, um, I only see one elected official in their period. Um, and we're looking at maybe 20 some people. I think that's a lot of oversight to give to a lot of people who don't really have a, uh, a tremendous amount of oversight by the public. Okay. Uh, not to mention that there are some, several things in here that get extremely specific that I think is something that uh, just creates more, more uh, paperwork and, and more uh, time-consuming efforts. Um, one of these things was things such as location, height, intensity, and direction of the illumination bulb type. Uh, it even goes down so far as to talk about fluorescent or sodium incandescence. A landscaping plan. Um, I don't know why it, why it would be any of our business to decide how a business should have, how, how they should conduct their landscaping. Um, outdoor, outdoor, outside storage. Um, and then uh, th those were the ones that really stuck out to me. So I, I still am very opposed to the idea of the technical commission, technical advisory board. And uh, I, I encourage everybody not to vote for that. Okay, now the idea with, not all these members are going to be there precisely one time. If the issue is having, if, they are, we'll if, if the, is to have additional elected officials, that can actually be done. But not all these people on this list are going to be involved in every committee. For example, is what it says, representative from the fire department with the jurisdiction over the property, including the petition. That would either be the Connersville Fire Department or Everton or Glenwood or Bentonville, not all four are involved. It's the same thing with the, uh, the sewer and the water. Now, we already have, as I mentioned last time, we already have a technical advisor in place with a uh, comparable role and a, uh, the ability to actually uh, make recommendations to the actual site plans. Now, that's for the subdivisions. This is taking what's already an authority that already exists with the plan commission, and it's just giving it to these actual developments. It's basically expanding the power of the technical advisory board, correct? Okay, yeah, it's giving more responsibility to the technical advisory board. But what this is doing is, and the big one is everybody remembers it, it's spun out from really dealing with the sidewalks. Now, the whole issue of the sidewalks is people from the start, there's two issues with Walmart up there that people asked me about. I had elected officials ask me about. Why couldn't we make Walmart put a traffic light up before they started? And we did not have the authority to require that or require the actual traffic studies and the traffic counts to require that. Now, if we'd had that uh, a technical advisory committee in place, we would have had the traffic studies. That would have had the, the authority to say, in order for this approval, we're going to need part of the position will be to put up a traffic light. Another one. The sidewalks. Now, the sidewalks in place, now you can then require the construction of the sidewalks. And this isn't limited to just the sidewalks. As you mentioned, actually, the lighting. Now, lighting needs to be controlled so that it doesn't shine onto, for example, the area that we're referring to up along Western Avenue. Now, the lighting itself, it's a residential area. Now, if you don't have properly designed lighting, what that does is it casts light in the residential area and it affects and it creates a nuisance to those particular properties in that use. The other part on the lighting is if you don't have control over the actual lighting in that particular area with the airport, it can significantly affect the night operations of the airport if you do not have downcast lighting. 
And what this is having in place is this is the type of lighting that you need to have. And that's pretty much standard. A lot of developments are going in that direction anyway to keep lighting from going this way and this way, up and then to the sides. They'd have to comply with the mm -hmm. regulations of the airport. Mm -hmm. so, so there are any existing regulations for the airport and things? We, and we do not have any existing regulations for the airport with that. See, that's the thing, is we don't have anything in there to protect the airport, any development that's occurring in the area. We don't have those in place. The FFA doesn't have... Okay, the FFA are recommendations about what you would want. It's desirable to have comparable items that the FAA has in your local regulations so you don't have to send everybody around to, well, let's review air, FAA circular, whatever, FAA circular this, FAA circular that. Mm -hmm. So you want to have those requirements in your zoning code to protect that. So basically, if I understand you correct, correctly, um, these things exist. Basically, what this would do is create more control uh, for a governmental agency, essentially, to create more um, oversight and have more power. Okay. Correct? There is more authority that's involved. I, I yes. think we understand. I yeah. think we just disagree. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, definitely. Now, but the overall idea of the plan review, because it's not limited to sidewalks, it's not limited to lighting, it's not limited to the uh, any landscaping. What it takes in consideration is your water easements, your sewer easements, the sidewalk easement. It takes in consideration drainage easements, drainage plan. So shared access. Yeah, shared access. And uh, so, Mr. So. for example, is we have been having me meetings with developers for a particular project, but it, without having this technical advisory committee in place, you can't require that certain things be done that are for the benefit of the community. You, it's to ensure that any development that comes through is constrained by what's in your zoning code and what's in the uh, what's, what's in your comprehensive plan and what's in Indiana code. This doesn't give carte blanche for a technical advisory committee to do things that it has no authority over. But this would give them a, a substantial amount of authority. What it does is it's a way to focus what exists in state code the comprehensive plan, making sure the development meets the goals and the recommendations of the comprehensive plan. It meets with the comprehensive plan, and then also with your zoning code, and then make sure it's meeting the requirements of the Indiana code. And it puts it in the one place, because otherwise when someone comes through, we have to deal with, okay, what's the local zoning code say? Here, what's the Indiana code say? What do, for example, the FAA circulars say? So you're pulling all these various things in place. And Mr. Goldman has been involved with, uh, for subdivision, some of these various. Uh, and that's worked very well in the past. Yeah. We've caught things that mm -hmm. weren't on plans and things that we really needed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like fire hydrants. You know, fire hydrants have to be at least 300 feet, you know. And sometimes they come in, they don't have 300 feet. So a lot of it's just technical things that, that we just try to correct. We're not there to make them do a bunch of extra things. We just want them to meet the basic standards. Is that answer? Well, yeah, my question is the answer. I just think we disagree. Yeah, it's, I, I think that's like right. I said, it, it, it's, it's a review process. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Now, the advisory board, you know, all this has come about due to the sidewalk from Walmart. This is why we're here. Mm -hmm. that, that's why right. we got to this point. Right. Um, so, hypothetically, this was, in, let's say this was in place and nobody had said anything about a sidewalk and they come along and we have this advisory board. Mm -hmm. The advisory board go do their study and then say, a sidewalk to Walmart might be too costly and, or yes or no. It will give you the answer whether you need one or don't. Exactly. And as we discussed last week, as per uh, a question by Mr. Flum, now, if it doesn't require... For example, a project at that time doesn't require the installation, say, of a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And one, this is not uncommon, is that you, if it's, you can either waive or you can delay. So if the conditions ever reach the point where a sidewalk is it's necessary to finally install because of pedestrian development and uh, the pedestrian traffic or pressure is built up, then you can require at a later date to actually go in and then install the sidewalk. Which I, I agree. I understand what Mr. Nobby is saying. I mean, you give a, you give too much power to one entity, you're going to have 
and somebody tries to get something done or whatever, there's a lot that can be misused. But the committee can't do anything outside the law. They correct. have to stick to what the state law that says. Correct. And okay. and uh, one thing uh, that this was one. Of, this is also one of the rec recommendations that was made in the comprehensive plan. Also, so this is a step toward implementing part of the recommendation. And what this would do is various other uh, aspects of uh, recommendations that are made in the uh, comprehensive plan regarding redevelopment. Mm -hmm would go through this process. So it's to make sure it's going to meet these various uh, other plans that, the, uh, that are in place. Yeah. Will it make it harder to get Go ahead, sorry. I have two questions. Uh, if this would have been in place at the time of Walmart, would there be a sidewalk from 30th Street to Walmart at this point? Okay. What there would have been in just place... Yes or no? What there would have been in place would have been... Just yes or no? The places that are built as they're developed have them. So, okay. no. Yeah. The entire sidewalk would not. No, okay. that is correct. And then the second thing, you talked about how it puts this in the place of uh, Indiana state code and the law. Then uh, exactly where does landscaping fall into the state law? Okay. The landscaping doesn't. What that what does is you have the authority to actually require landscaping, review landscaping, whether it's for the drainage, whether it's for a reduction of a... Uh, I understand the drainage in that, but yeah. this one specifically says landscape plan showing all natural features, trees, forest cover, water sources, so on. Well, those items are already requ required with for, for the, you know, some of the actual plans that we already have. So th what this is doing is that it's showing where everything is at. This isn't saying that thou shalt put in a but it doesn't say this it doesn't location. Either. Yeah, but what it says is it, it calls for actually showing where the landscaping is going to be. For example, you could very well have someone want to put landscaping with particular planting. That's going to cause cause views of uh, blocking views of traffic. Here is my fear. Um, my fear is that let's say we get this in place, mm -hmm. and we have a business come in and they want to do some really, I don't know, really new type of landscaping, and the commission doesn't like it. That with this, given this authority, they could shoot down their plan based on their landscape, they don't like the way their landscaping looks. And that, that is something that does trouble me a great deal. Okay, which number is that? Uh, let's see here. Which page, which number? Page number 9, uh, 12. Basically, it says size and type of plant material. So, if they want to put in ginkgo trees, which personally I don't much care for, but if they want to put in ginkgo trees and the people on the board don't like them, they could say no to your entire plant because they don't like ginkgo trees. No, what it could do is that they could make a recommendation for an actual change. But now, given, there is all, there is also in place is an appeal process also. So, where these come through, and then if the changes are made, which is why. Finally, does come up with the area plan commission. Now, now the other aspect is if this is a serious sore nature, or there's a concern over that, is this is something that can actually be amended out also. But the key also is it's also showing the uh, the existing landscape features also, and uh, and the water sources. The way you're, the way you're saying it is it, it's. It almost sounds like a homeowners association. Like you have to put a certain type of paint on your house. Well, you it, it, I'm not saying that, that it's, that's what's going to happen. I'm saying it's giving them the authority to right. allow that to happen. And if you give authority to people, then you don't get that back. Right. So once you give authority away, now you've opened the door, and whoever steps in, steps in. So that's the thing that really worries me with this, with this technical advisor board. Everybody understand that Gabe's concerned. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Chairman. You know, we started out on this for that sidewalk at Walmart. And if I understand correctly, we questioned it last time. You know, we still couldn't require them if we had this okay. item. Well, but let me say this. Why can't we just put something in it that says if these, if that business is along Park or uh, State Road 1 or developed, that there has to be sidewalks installed okay. and, and get away from site committees? Okay. Well, okay. One thing also is, this isn't something that's brand new either. 
This was occurring over the course of the last year with the reformatting of the zoning code. Now, but as far as, uh, okay, just the sidewalks themselves. Now, it's not as simple as saying thou shalt install sidewalks. What you have to take into consideration is what is the class of road? What is the actual speed of the traffic on that road? Is there a curb in place? Okay, you have to take into consideration is this going to be installed in the actual right of way or on the actual property owner's property? Okay, is it going to be for an industrial use? Is it going to be for commercial use or residential? So you're going to have to then, in the meantime, as your as per that suggestion is, you then have to develop very specific development standards that you're going to put in the uh, you know in the zoning code to say you need to put in a sidewalk. Well, what are the standards of that sidewalk that you're going to have someone to build? Then, in a situation where, is, say, you don't need necessarily need a sidewalk, then someone has to get a variance from the zoning board because there's no other way to actually for me or anybody else to waive that sidewalk requirement if it's in some place that makes absolutely no sense at all. <coughs> See, it's the, you might, you might want something in black and oh, white. I understand. Yeah, you might want something in black and white, but when you put something in a pure black and white terms, you have absolutely no flexibility. And that's part of what this is. It allows flexibility through this review and that process. makes it a rule with no flexibility. Yeah, it makes it an absolute yes or no rule. You probably need more of those. Well, I hear what Gabe is saying. You're using the word authority. And the name of this committee is the Technical Advisory Committee that's doing advice as opposed to having authority. Instead of saying shall and will and must, they're reviewing these site plans to make technical advice, to give technical advice. People that should know, the fire departments, the people from the infrastructure and drainage. I, I guess, and I haven't really considered it, I haven't considered this in the same line that maybe Mr. Nobby has. But I have thought about it, like if you remember last month I asked you, on the one member of the area board of one member of the area board of zoning appeals, and I asked the question: Is it necessary that that be not be a member of the APC? It doesn't say that there. Yeah. yeah and maybe you've changed, changed that already. Yeah. But but it's yeah, when I say that you convene this technical advisory board, and I guess when I was getting ready to do that, I'd say, who is it? Because it could be as many as 25 people. Yeah. And how do you know exactly which ones it's going to be? I guess the, 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 way, the way this is laid out here, the structure of the Technical Advisory Committee seems a little ambiguous okay. to me. It's a little bit... Okay. Now, could clean up lane because, for example, it's the representative from the fire department within the jurisdiction of the property included in the petition. Mm -hmm. So That's that clear. would be one of those. The representative from the public utility providing water and or sewer and or water to the property included in the petition. And uh, then it's the uh, representative from the agency with authority over the drainage and the rural fiber review. And that's, you know, one of those particular entities is actually involved right there. Mm -hmm. So that's not all four of those because it's stating that the agency with the authority, something like that should probably be of the, pr of the property, location of the property. Do you think this might <clears throat> need to be tabled until the next meeting so you can clean it up so? Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's no issue with that. What I'm saying is that... Uh, I think that might be yeah. appropriate with somebody. Yeah, because if there, there's other things such as that as Mr. Uh, Harold's referring to. And Mr. Harold did put his finger on it. It's an advisory board. It's to advise both the, the petitioners, the developers, and it's also to advise the area plan commission. You've said on multiple occasions, though, it gives them authority. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. give them authority well, or not. Well, well, what is it? I mean, that's, that's what I was really trying to clear up. Is it an advisory or authority it? on several yeah. occasions? So yeah. it does give them authority or are they advisory? Okay. Yeah. I, I guess I can clean up the language because what it does is, the, uh, yeah, because ultimately the decision is, as you looked at, they're with, based on the actual size. There's a staff level decision if it's under one acre. It's between the one and the five acres 
then if there's a, uh, they can't approve. If there's absolutely no problem, if there's issues, it needs to go forward with plan commissions. And anything above the five, above five acres, because the rule five gets into the Department of Environmental Management, is then everything above the five acres it need, of the development area has to go in front of the area plan commission. So and we have a motion to table it. And then in the meantime, anybody on the board that has a concern about it is give it to Bill before, at least a week before the next meeting. Is that good anybody's choice? I apologize. We were having a meeting on the side here. I apologize. Okay. Uh, basically, <laughs> basically, <laughs> yeah. Dr. Payne, right? I, I apologize. Okay. I make a motion to the table. Okay, table and to the next device. regular meeting. And then to get any comments to me at least a week ahead of time. Right. To revise and mm -hmm. for the next regular meeting. Yeah. And this includes anything that any members think should probably be eliminated, added, changed. Cleared up. Okay. If it's not done by a week ahead of time, <coughs> we'll see what's going to go. Is there a second to that motion? Second. All in favor of table until the next regular meeting, City of Five saying aye. 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 Always the same. Yeah. And one thing to keep, keep in mind is it's not just that, but it's these other things that are going into the administration also. Take a look at those because those are clearing up a lot of things that we really don't have very poor guidance and procedures. I mean, my thing is we, we've almost rewrote the, rewritten the code on our sidewalk. I mean, the whole thing. And that, that kind of well, it, it, it kind of freaks me out. Yeah, well, well, what it is, it's, and it's removing things, administrative procedures, into the same location. Right. And that has to make it easier to use. But like I was saying, it does. It is better to have more people advising mm -hmm. to think of problems. Now, just to clarify, let's say the technical advisory board gives an unfavorable recommendation. Mm -hmm. Does the project stop? No, they have the ability, just like any other uh, anything else, they have the ability to appeal upward. So if the advisory board says no, they can then appeal that to the area planning commission. So it does give them a level of authority. Yeah, and if that's not clear in there, that needs to be cleared up. Okay. Motion. The discussion was on the motion to table this until the next regular meeting. And anybody that has comments to make relative to the contents of this or to let go at least one week in advance, right? Jerry Gobin? Yes. Zane Benoit? Yes. Ed Harrell? Yes. Carl Hilton? Yes. Jason Waterman? Yes. Gabe Nobby? Yes. Brian Jennings? Yes. James Barrett? Yes. Eight other members. Motion's passed. Good table. You know, where are we at next? Uh, mixed right. up the gender. Okay. Now, what I don't have is I left the office mm -hmm. and I left the uh, I have to do the director's report next month. Is that true? Sitting in the pressure right now. You just put it as good to fail to do it. That's okay. That will get resolved. Every time. Okay. No, 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 I don't think we need to attack. These are the only items. The director's report is at its office. Well, who do you have? Now you'll want to see that first. Well, we usually prove it anyway, so we might not now. No, no. Okay, uh, director's reports in the office. And we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. I have a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. Move and second to adjourn. All in favor of signal five to say aye. Aye. Our hands adjourn. The April meeting of the Fayette County Board of Zoning Appeals is now called to order. If you'd all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation.
nation, our God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The secretary could do a roll call. Bill Crawford. Jason Waterman. Here. Carl Hilton. Here. Carrie Steele. Here. Kenny Burgess. Here. We have a quorum. Um, relatively short agenda. Uh, next item would be approval of minutes from our last meeting, which was January 14, 2013. Mr. President, yes, Mr. I move to approve, approve the minutes. All right, we have a motion to approve. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And it's approved. Very good. Um, we have one public hearing tonight, a special exception for an expansion of the existing special exception number 25 for a health facility for the Whitewater, Whitewater Valley Care Pavilion located at 450 Erie Avenue for geriatric inpatient and outpatient psychiatric services. I know you guys just presented this to the area plan. I need somebody to come up, sign in, and uh, do it for the BCA. Mm -hmm. My name's Randy White. I'm the hospital CEO and president. Um, the structure we are discussing will be put on the west side of the existing building, uh, a 12-bed addition, a Jerry psychiatric uh, unit that will treat people who are 65 and older, uh, issues of dementia, depression, uh, polypharmaceuticals, and issues like that. This uh, project is roughly two and a half million dollars, uh, seven hundred. 7,500 square feet um, should create anywhere from 15 to 20 jobs depending on the census that we're able to build to. Uh, traffic on the street should be one patient a minute a day on average, one discharge a day, uh, seven or eight employees in the daytime, seven or eight employees at night. Um, not as, uh, as expansive as a bill as the previous um, 30 beds, but still a, a sizable project. Uh, we're asking for approval for this so we can start construction as we need to get this project. Uh, we need to have a patient in this building by the end of September so we can recognize uh, the maximum government payments by the way it's set up. And the average expected stay for, you know, for a patient? Roughly 10 to 14 days depending on the diagnosis. Ambulatory or non-ambulatory? Both. Both. Okay. Mostly ambulatory though. Any other questions from the board members? I happen to live up in that neighborhood too, so I know a lot of, about that. And remember back when you guys built originally, and that was Bill Abbott was, I think, in your position uh, over the hospital. And, and the people in Beeson were just, it was change. They didn't want change. It was a field, and now we're going to have a hospital, and they just went crazy over it, which you can understand that. Um, and they were promised a lot, and even Bill Abbott in the hospital, they cut down the, the bank on Erie, or Erie Avenue and Waterloo meet. That yeah. used to be uh, a lot higher and harder to see. That and cornfield there? Yeah. Corn, and, corn uh, church. So they, they did a lot of work there to, to make it easier to get in and out, and people, and they, uh, people were supposed to come out and turn left and go to Waterloo Road, and then you hear a lot about people cutting through the, the neighborhood. I think not you guys, but since then, uh, this board and, and the whole city has developed that whole area up there, which you basically have to go through a housing addition to get to that that development. So you've got, you've, and most people do, uh, you've got a church that's um, that's up there, and you get a lot, of, you know, you've got a lot of traffic on Sunday and Wednesday. You've got the Alma Hopper. Uh, housing or uh, uh, it apartments. You've got uh, what was the Dunn Center now? It's Center Stone, I think. And then you've got you, and now you're going to you're going to develop more and build more. Plus, there's more land up there even developed. The biggest thing to all that is that road that you're, that that's being developed on. It's not your fault. It's the city's fault. That that road's not much more than an alley. You know, it's, uh, I believe it was uh, 15 and a half feet wide. How, how much is a normal lane of traffic okay, supposed to be? Okay, the city standards are 13 feet for traffic lane for a uh, local street of that type of neighborhood. For one lane. Per this lane. This is the entire road. So I guess what I'm, I'm asking is, for we somehow we have to get that road widened. Are you talking about the street that runs in behind the restaurant and the church behind Waterloo, or are you talking about Erie itself? I'm talking about Erie itself, yeah. 
Yeah, it's 15 and a half feet wide and Beeson's I believe was 23 feet. So, but, and, and then another thing is, is uh, fire trucks go up there all the time. I don't know if there's some probably uh, false alarms from, from a hospital. There's some, I don't know who, I, I don't where, get that report, but it can't be too many. But, but that, the Dunn Center, and, and at least, I'm guessing once a month, we hear the truck, you know, and they'll pick a road and they'll drive down through there. But again, Erie is so narrow; it needs to be needs to be wider. The people that live up there complain about it. they live right up where you, you come out of your drive there, and so I understand where they're coming from. We don't have any sidewalks up there at all. I think the APC's been working on businesses putting sidewalks in and, and new businesses. Uh, uh, you know, if if the city were to widen that someday, I guess I'd like your help. From the hospital to help kind of uh, push that along with us to get that done. Uh, I'm not asking you to pay for it, but it, it should have been done before we start developing it up there. I mean, it's just, it, I think the reason it went up there to begin with because that was cheap land. We can buy it, you know, cheap and let's put it up there and rezone it, and now it's just taken off. And it's good, and I'm glad to see you do that. But I think that's the problem we've got up there now. You've got all that traffic that's going through that neighborhood. And it's going down to basically an alley, and I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do about that. Well, the city. Well, how can we put pressure on the city to, to do something about that road? I think the first thing you'd have to show up. <coughs> Get on the agenda. I think you know, you'd have to show up. Yeah. That's fine. It's a, <laughs> and and you know, and I don't think it's going to stop. I think there's going to be more development up there. There's more land up there that's for sale right now, and and. Um, uh, and again, I'm glad to see this. I'm glad to see them expanding it. But on the other hand, it's putting a burden on that neighborhood. It really is. You know, um, the traffic has. You, you can't imagine the traffic we've got up there now compared to what it was. And I'm not. That's you know that's okay to a point, but it's just it's just a huge amount of traffic. Uh, and, and the gentleman who spoke at the APC was right, and uh, after talking to him after this meeting, there are some trees that hang out and, and uh, make the street appear even tighter. Uh, I've been talking to him, he didn't believe any of those wires, but uh, they, they probably would uh, help the appearance and the availability of the street by getting those come back to. So that's a, I'm sure a city issue. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, but the. Project eight to nine, seven to eight, eight to nine uh, cars per day, and, and the same at night. I mean, uh, the, the staffing is going to be probably the same uh, with uh, one or two cars coming and going on average per day of patients, one coming and one going, uh, just by the numbers. So um, that's that's what we're asking for. Any other comments from the board? Questions? Anyone in the audience care to speak on the subject? Oh, hey, Ken. Did you have a chance to be able to find out anything about the actual uh, right of way width up there on Erie? No. Okay. No. Mr. President, yes. I move to approve this request. Right. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Gary. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Jason Waterman? Yes. Carl Hilton? Yes. Carrie Steele? Yes. <coughs> Kenny Burks? Yes. Okay. Very good. Come in and get your building permit. <laughs> Bring the package in and uh, I'll be around. Do uh, you have any idea what time you're going to be in? Um, so no. <laughs> it'll, okay. it'll be somebody from my office will be in hopefully tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so what you need to do is, is I, if I can have an idea of what time because I'm now the only person in that office. I no longer have a building inspector. The county council got rid of the funding for it, so I am, I'm stuck doing everything. They would not even call you before come. Uh, or, if you, or if you set up a certain time you'd like to, I can arrange my inspections to fit around that. Okay. So if you, if someone could be there, say maybe about nine o'clock or nine thirty, that'd be perfect. Okay. Well, you take that. Okay. okay. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if memory serves, the director's report is sitting on your printer. Yes, it is. Uh, right. So unless there's something else. We can uh, wait here while he runs back. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to adjourn if I can get that motion. So yeah, we, it's about a quarter to five when I... Second. All right, meeting adjourned. Signature. Oh, the rules.